Well, great to have you guys here today. Um, you know, uh, it's a great day for the University of Pittsburgh football. It really is uh, after, you know, a, a long but short uh, recruiting season. Um, we feel really confident in what we've done uh, as a staff. Uh, all the recruiting efforts have gone into uh, really a, a great class. Just to give you some quick uh, facts to start off with about the class. Um, obviously, the size you guys probably know because because uh, of the media, but 15 signees total, uh, which I really feel good about. Uh, we got the number one player from the state of Pennsylvania. That doesn't happen every day. Uh, of those 15 players, 11 of them are captains in their high school, okay? And, you know, that probably is a reason why when you look at our kids, you can see so much character that they have. Uh, so that's impressive. I don't know if any classes have that many captains. Um, and again, captains just don't go out to the best players on the team, which, you know, I think we've got some of those, uh, but also to leaders and and to win championships, uh, you got to have leaders on your team. So happy about that. We got eight eight prospects on offense, um, got seven on defense, uh, got two champions uh, in the Whippeal, uh, have one state champion out there in New Jersey with Paramus Catholic, have uh, eight All State winners, uh, five on the first team. Uh, we got one current member that's with us uh, uh, on our football team. Might be down. Matter of fact, he is in the waiting right now. If you guys want to get some video down there with Coach Andrews. Uh, get him pumping. It might be a, a good idea just to get him uh, in live action. I think he's out of there at 345 if you send somebody down there. Um, as far as where we got our kids from, you know, the areas, we got seven guys from Pennsylvania, three from Florida. Um, we got two guys from the state of Ohio, one from New Jersey, one from Texas, and one from Delaware. As far as addressing our needs, um, you know, probably the toughest thing is you do as a football coach, you come into a job, um, after a bowl game and you're kind of going, you know, what do we need? Okay. Uh, you really don't know exactly what you need. You know, you talk to coach Junko and say, hey, Junk, what do you think? Um, which he's a major, uh, resource for us and, and coach Cabal, of course. Uh, but just trying to find out what we need. And it's kind of like when you guys are watching the NFL draft after round two, uh, is over, you're looking down at the ticker, you're saying, what's the best available. Okay. Uh, sometimes at that point in recruiting, if you just, start off saying, hey, listen, we need a D tackle. What's the best one you can get? You can make some, you can make some major mistakes uh, by doing that. So really, we we're looking to get the best possible players that we needed. We ended up with nine skill players, you know, including two quarterbacks in that group. And I don't think you can go wrong. But again, it wasn't a matter of saying, hey, listen, we need five defensive linemen. You know, we got to get them. Because I think when you do that, you put not only the coaching staff in a bind for the next four years, okay, because it's not one year. It's a you know, four or five year commitment as for a football coach. But you put that kid in a bind, and you end up having someone on your team maybe that's not good enough. Maybe you out-recruit them the next year, uh, and, you, and you got somebody that's really not as happy as you want them to be. Um, and we need that. We've got three big skill players, a tailback and two linebackers, and got three linemen out of it. So uh, really, when you look at the class, you're looking at we got a, a class of, of great speed uh, and three linemen, and, and uh, we will make do with that. Uh, very excited about the, the, the uh, quality. Um, again, we could have added a few more prospects into this class, but, uh, you know, if there's doubt in our coaches' minds, in my mind, you know, we're better to say, hey, we'll play it safe right now and, and save one. Uh, so we're happy to do that. Um, looking at the whole recruiting cycle, we had 11 days, really, of recruiting, okay, on the road. Um, 11 days, if you can imagine that, you know, Martin Luther King Day fell on one of those Mondays that you kind of, you know, schools are, are closed down. Um, but after the dead period went into a contact period, 11 days to get your job done and uh, you know, our coaches did an unbelievable job, guys. I mean, not a good job, but an unbelievable job. Uh, matter of fact, the guys back in the office kept saying, hey, coaches, you guys got to slow down. I can't believe you're going like that. Coach Young was like, you know, I don't know how you're doing this, but uh, our coaches did a heck of a job uh, in, those, uh, in those 11 days on the road. Uh, as you guys all know, you hear about it all the time, you know, recruiting is about relationships, and, uh, and you've got to have a relationship. And there were some previous relationships that we had with some of the guys we signed, uh, some of them, there was no relationship in, in, uh, in the whole process. So uh, relationships, we're a little bit behind as you come in at, at that point in time. Uh, we really, you know, have been on the, on, the, on the job for about 30 days. At least I've been 30. Some of these guys have been uh, just a few. Um, you know, we started off on the road. You know, we came off of a dead period and uh, identified where we're going, where are the best available players that we, we need to target. And our coaches scattered across the country. And I know you saw it on Twitter where we're going. But all that was is one area. But that one arrow that pointed to South Florida or to Western Pennsylvania was scattered in about seven or eight areas. Um, so uh, our coaches did a heck of a job of, of spreading out and really 
crossing over the country. Um, so it was, it was obviously really impressive um, what, with what they did there. Um, the take, there's a bunch of uh, things that are involved in putting a great class together. There's a lot of people involved that really don't get thanks. Um, the first thing I want to do is, is thank the recruiting class that, that's coming in, those 15 guys and their families for having trust in me as the head coach and our staff and having confidence in us as people to send their child to play for us because it's not easy. Okay, as you guys know, they've raised them for 16, 17 years, and they're going to hand off their child for the next four or five years with this coaching staff and, and, and on short notice. So, you know, you, you, you know, you have to thank all those families, uh, the moms, the dads, the uncles, the grandmas, uh, you know, and really the coaches that had trust and faith uh, in this coaching staff because uh, uh, we, we know it's not easy. You know, one of the best compliments we had after our first weekend, and I might add, we came off the road two days on the road recruiting, and then bang, you, there you are for a weekend uh, recruiting trip. You spent Friday night, you know, eating dinner with them and getting to know the families, and that's, that's about it. You know, the next day you show them campus, uh, you know, eat again, uh, and then Sunday morning you eat again and, and meet with the parents again and, the, and, and, uh, and our players and um, some of, you know, probably from three or four of the, of the nine kids on campus that weekend made mention that, and this is probably the most impressive compliment you can get, is that, hey, coach, it seems like this staff has been here for two or three years already, not 72 hours. And they knew it was 72 hours because as we were walking into dinner with our recruits, you know, I'm high-fiving some of our coaches and, and shaking hands like, hey, I didn't know you were here. I mean, I didn't know they were on campus yet. I thought maybe they're still, you know, in, in route from their last job. So that's been the most impressive thing is we've got great people here and, and uh, we're excited. Uh, again, I want to thank, and I think I've already done that, our entire staff. I want to thank Coach Kabbalah. Where's Coach Kabbalah at? Again, he'll be available. Is he in here? Is he probably recruiting on the next? He's probably starting on the next class. He's back there. Uh, but he'll be available afterwards uh, for all the recruiting efforts, especially we did a great job when we were here, but especially when we weren't here because uh, he really held things together as best he could. And Coach Junko, where's Coach Junko out? Coach Junko, I think he's probably working on that class as well. But Coach Junko did a great job and everybody in the recruiting office there. Um, I want to uh, thank our entire football team because they're the ones that really get left out at some, uh, at some point. Those guys done a heck of jo a job. I mean, James Conner continues to spend time with, with our players. I mean, and I'm just pointing out one guy because it's amazing. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, Jordan Whitehead is coming back down this weekend to spend more time with him. So it's not a fake, let me pull this guy in. It's a true love that, you know, our current players are bringing those guys into this family. And I think it's impressive. But so I want to thank all our players on the weekends. It's not just the guy that's hosting those players, but it's the entire team that gets around our recruits and tries to make it feel like a, a, a uh, you know, family atmosphere. And we always tell our players and the families that the players and our current team will really tell the truth about this program. They will reflect, you know, what this program is about and what we're about. So uh, I, want to, I want to thank those guys. Um, they do a heck of a job. Um, and, and again, with those players in mind, I, I've always said this in recruiting, it's our job as coaches to get them, to get players on this campus, okay? And then when they're here, it's really the responsibility of our players to show them around and really to me, that's where, you know, that relationship is built with our players as well. So, again, thank those guys uh, for everything they've done there. Um, again, this is just the beginning. As I was sitting on the phone with some guys uh, this morning, this is just the beginning of a relationship. This is just the start, okay? We're investing in these players, and they're investing in us, in life. Um, and this is just the beginning, and it's not where you start in this process. So they're just starting here becoming a, a football player and a student athlete here at the University of Pittsburgh, but it's where you finish. Where are they going to be in the next four or five years? Three years maybe. Okay, and we've seen some guys, you know, you could see in the Super Bowl the 44 starters that there wasn't one five-star guy there. Okay, uh, a handful, maybe five players that were four stars. Uh, so we've got, a, you know, a group full of uh, guys that we think can take us to the next level and, and, and make big plans here at the University of Pittsburgh. Um, the last thing, probably the most impressive group, you guys can watch all the video and you, know, you went into uh, YouTube and Huddle if you guys got access to that. But the most impressive thing about this class is the character, okay? Uh, major character. When you talk to these kids, you've got a bunch of leaders. And, and you know, we've had conversations in, in the staff meetings that we've had. Uh, there's been few staff meetings. We had a long one yesterday morning. Um, but the character involved in this class is incredible. And that, that is the most impressive thing. And, again, you can watch guys catch and run and make tackles. Uh, but we got a, a group of character individuals uh, that will lead this football team uh, 
into, into the future and, and guys that you really want to be uh, in a foxhole with, if you might say, uh, guys that you want to be in a meeting room. I mean, do you want to be in the meeting room with those, those 15 linebackers? And I think we got a group of guys that for the next four or five years, our coaches are going to enjoy being in those meetings, and I think that's, that's uh, probably most important. So to briefly go through you know, the, the prospects on this list, and I don't want to bore you because you probably know more than I do, uh, the first prospect is uh, Celine Brightwell, a uh, kid from Paramus Catholic High School in uh, Bergen County, New Jersey. Uh, Salim, again, a very athletic outside linebacker, smart. I had a previous relationship with him. We recruited him at, uh, at Michigan State. And, uh, again, a very smart, well-coached uh, by Coach Partridge up there, uh, very well-coached and, and a guy that really uh, fits a need as far as outside linebackers with the speed he has. He's a, probably a 200, I don't know what it says, 210, 200-pound linebacker that can run um, and, and again, based on our needs, I think he's a guy that uh, uh, we're really, really happy to have here. Ben Danucci, quarterback uh, from uh, Pine Richland High School right here in town. And, uh, you know, we got here and had a quarterback situation come up and found out really we had, you know, really only two quarterbacks on scholarship in our program. So that became a need. Uh, you didn't have to be a genius to figure, that, figure out that was a, a need of ours. And uh, as we started looking and scouring, you know, quarterbacks across the country, um, we just didn't pick him because he was the guy that's close by and, and he's right up the road. Maybe it's easy for coach to drive up there and see him. That wasn't the reason. The reason we picked uh, Ben was because he was the best quarterback that we found out there. And uh, I've got no doubts in his capabilities to, to lead this offense in the fut uh, future. He's smart, okay, very smart kid. Uh, he's very composed. He makes all the throws, and he's athletic enough to run. And, and uh, again, I don't know what else you'd look for in a quarterback. Um, and, again, he was, he was right here. Alan Edwards, a defensive lineman, 6'4", 235-pound kid from Dean Junior College up in Franklin, Massachusetts. Um, again, a kid that I had a previous relationship with in the past, had an opportunity to go watch him practice uh, in an open weekend in November sometime uh, up there at uh, his college. Uh, not a typical junior college. We, will, we, you know, we won't be known for taking a bunch of JC guys unless there's a need, um, but I don't think he's a JC guy when you meet him. Uh, you fall in love with the kid. He's a super, super kid. And, um, again, 235 pounds, uh, a guy that we're happy to have in our program. Uh, the next individual, Darren Hall from Austintown Fitch High School, right over in my backyard, Youngstown, Ohio. A big old tailback. Again, a kid that we had previous relationships with. Um, so I think he was, you know, I was getting text messages before my presser here uh, on the 26th of December from him, um, or direct messages, I guess on Twitter from him, uh, and he was excited. But, again, another very high-character uh, guy, uh, strong runner, physical, um, will punish you, he's got great hands out of the backfield, can make a lot of plays for us in the future, and, and really, you know, our type of running back. Uh, the next guy we talked about a little bit already, Malik Henderson, who's uh, down in the weight room. He'll be up here about 345, so you got about 30 more minutes to uh, uh, have an opportunity to at least speak with him. But he's here, and... Uh, and I think it's always tough being a mid-year guy. And you think about really the stress maybe he, he goes through with, you know, he doesn't even know about a coach. I mean, he's here so fast that, you know, he doesn't know what's cap happening. Um, and, again, another one that you have to say, hey, thank you, Malik, for, for having trust in us because he could have turned around and went back home. Um, but he trusts in us. Kid that's always got a smile on his face, super, super person, very athletic, uh, will be a corner for us, um, shows the ability to, to, to run. Uh, with loose hips, and, and uh, we're, we're happy to have him in the, in the class. Uh, Quadri uh, Henderson, a receiver from Wilmington, Delaware, at uh, DuPont High School, uh, five foot eight guy, but he's electric. Okay, he's an electric player. Uh, maybe, you know, uh, pound per pound, one of the faster guys in the class. Uh, got great hands out of the backfield, not afraid to catch balls over the middle. Uh, tough, has played some defense uh, as well, and uh, again, a, a super player in this class. Uh, the next one, Gentry Ivory, an off-the-radar guy. You talk about previous relationships. You talk about no relationships. And brought him and his family up here, mom and dad, great people, and uh, spent the weekend with them and really enjoyed everything about this guy. But a fast guy. When you watch tape, you're kind of going, why is that guy still out there? Uh, had a few offers and um, a guy that we're excited to have in our class. Um, and uh, he'll, be a, he'll be an impact receiver for us uh, here in the near future. Dane Jackson, the next one, six foot. 165-pound, uh, you know, cornerback as well. Could play anywhere in the back end from Cornell High School. Um, again, played quarterback, played corner, uh, returner, does it all. 
Uh, he's, a, he's a tremendous basketball player. If you guys want to go out and watch him on a Tuesday night, uh, I think he's averaging, I think he put up 41 or something like last night, averaging 30 points a game, I believe. Um, but uh, just a great athlete, great family, and um, you know, just a smooth guy that will strike you. Um, and uh, you know, we need guys in the back end that can strike people. Anthony McKee, a linebacker from Columbus, Ohio. Um, again, a 6'2", says 200 pounds. He might be 197, 98. Um, but a guy we had a previous relationship with. We recruited him in the past. Um, he's been on our, our campus, whatever campus it's been, for a long time. And uh, very athletic. Again, fits a need that we'd have you know, with the changing of all these offense. Everybody talks about the spread. And sometimes I'm not sure they know what the spread is. But um, we needed some athletic linebackers in this program, and, and uh, he will fit that with Salim as well, uh, the type of guy we need. But very athletic. Uh, we offered him a long time ago. Um, as a sophomore and a junior, he played linebacker, and then out of need for their high school, and because of his athletic ability, he moved back and played safety for him in his senior year and, and did a fantastic job. So uh, another uh, addition that uh, will make an impact. Uh, the next guy, Alex Paulina from Cannon McMillan High School. Um, you know, just a, maybe the toughest guy in our class. You talk about finishing blocks and taking people to the ground. Um, I mean, he's never going to fall on the ground, but he, he'll be on the ground a bunch because he's going to be on top of somebody. He finishes blocks about as good as I've seen any lineman in, in the last, you know, 10 years of, of recruiting. But he's, you know, what I wrote in my notes was nasty. He's a nasty guy and, um, and you know, was a former wrestler. And, uh, you know, we're, we're happy to have him in our program. And, again, uh, you know, a great addition to our offensive line. The next guy, uh, Nathan, or Nate Peterman, uh, quarterback, transfer from the University of Tennessee, uh, signed with us. Had a previous relationship with our offensive coordinator, Jim Chaney, and he can probably tell you a little bit more about him, but super, super guy. When you look at needs, he was the guy we felt we needed to get. With two quarterbacks, we didn't really want to bring in two freshmen in here. Uh, we needed an older guy to, to uh, you know, just help fill in the gap there that we didn't have. Um, so with his experience playing in big-time games, uh, in his conference down there, he brings a ton of maturity. Um, you know, he was hosted by uh, Chad uh, when he came on his visit. I thought that was important to make sure those two are together and, and could fit together uh, because you have to have that chemistry, you know, in every room, but especially in that quarterback room. And, um, and I know Coach Cheney will manage those guys well, but uh, two guys that really got along real well on the weekend, and we're happy that, uh, that he's with us. He, ma he makes us better, uh, makes all the throws. Next guy, Tony Pilato. You know, it says 6'5", 315 pounds. You know, he looks like he's more 6, the tallest center I've ever seen in, in high school football. Uh, but he's a big man uh, that is very, very athletic, can run around, basketball player, and, uh, you know, great family. Uh, but, again, the, guy that, the, the way that guy, you know, finishes to the second level on people, uh, he's, a, again, another impressive addition to this class. Uh, next gentleman is Jay Stalker uh, from Coatesville Area High School uh, out in eastern Pennsylvania. Um, 6'2", 195 pound guy, very athletic, um, very well coached there, and uh, a guy that uh, you know has played basically a lot of our defense in our scheme. Um, he'll be a free safety for us and uh, can make an immediate impact as well, I think, in that position because of how athletic he is, and he's also tough enough to come down in the box and, and tackle people, which uh, sometimes you can't get that. Uh, next one here is Trey Tipton, wide receiver from Apollo Ridge High School. Um, a guy that when, you know, just lights up every room that he walks in as far as character goes. Um, again, a wide receiver. You know, Coach Cheney said we could borrow him on defense if we needed it. Uh, so we appreciate that. He's shaking his head over there. Um, but you know, the thing that's special about him, not only does he have great speed and all that, which everybody in our class has, uh, looks like a very uh, great route runner. And uh, we're, we're happy to have him in here. Super guy. Again, held on to the end. Had a lot of people poking in. And all these guys, you know, when you get a commitment from a guy, just because you have a commitment, they're getting every one of these guys is getting beat up every day by someone else walking in that high school in those 11 days. So you're fighting off. You wish you had a bat at the door, just keep, could keep him out. But uh, he's a guy that fought off some action and, and st stuck with the Panthers. So uh, we're excited about him. And then the last one, uh, because we want alphabetically, um, is uh, Jordan Whitehead uh, from Central Valley High School here, uh, the number one player in the state. You know, probably enough said there. Uh, super, super kid, super family. Um, you know, you couldn't have a better addition to the class. He's a guy that's hung on and, again, had faith and trust and is a guy that loves the city of Pittsburgh and the state of Pennsylvania. He can do it all. Uh, he's a tailback. He's a receiver. 
He can be a corner. He can be a safety. He can do everything and, again, can make an immediate impact. Um, he's tough enough you know, to, to line up at safety and just come down and smoke you, and he's athletic enough, smooth enough to play corner for So um, he, he's a guy that uh, I can't say enough good things about him. So that is the 15 young student athletes that we have in, and, and we're excited about it as a program, and we move on to the next stage. So uh, with that, I'll leave it up. Maybe, maybe you guys have some questions. Maybe you don't. Whitehead, you said eight guys on offense, seven guys on defense. Which category does he fall into? Because I talked to him today. He said he wants to play both. Yeah, well, that's good. You know, I want him to play both. And, and uh, you know, wherever I've been, we've had guys that have played both ways. Uh, Jordan's a guy that can do that. Uh, we'll probably get his feet wet first on defense. <laughs> Coach Cheney's out of here. Um, we got to teach him. Some, first of all, we got to find out, you know, how fast he picks stuff up. But he's athletic enough to uh, play everything, like we said. But he's going to start off on defense. Um, but, you know, we're going to sprinkle him in and have a package for him on offense. Um, but to me, what I don't want to do is get him in there and fill his head with so much information that we slow him down. we got to get him into a position where he goes, Coach, I got this. And once he says he has that, then we'll give him something else to chew uh, and let him chew that for a while. So Coach Chaney will get him. Um, but I think we got, uh, we got a great receiver, don't we? We have, we have a good receiver? I think, sure. we got, I think we got a great one. So... Um, we'll start him off on defense, get him comfortable there without overloading him. Because, you know, that's the worst thing I think we can do as a coach is, is overload a guy to a point where he doesn't look as good as we want him to look. What were your interactions like with him from the time you got here as you guys built that relationship, you know, holding him here, keeping him committed and all that? You know what, the, you know, and the coaches could all speak, you know, for this afterwards. You know, he might have been one of the easier guys. Everybody thought maybe he was the hardest guy to recruit maybe. Uh, but with a, you know, with a great family support system and a guy that loves Pittsburgh, he was probably one of the easier guys to recruit, to be honest with you. He wasn't one of those guys that every day you walked in the office saying, you know, is he in or is he out? I mean, it was some other guys that you weren't sure about uh, because of all the action they were getting and, 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 and you know, the doors that were being pounded on. So uh, we had great interaction. I mean, the kid's just a super person, and, and he's loyal, and he knows what integrity is. And, and uh, again, that's why I thank, thank all those guys. I think it's real important that uh, – they trusted this, this coaching staff. You mentioned sort of earlier the, I guess, lack of depth on a defensive line in this class. Um, do, do you wish you were able to get one more prospect there, or does that become a priority for next year now? Well, I think it becomes a priority for next year, but, you know, you'd be mad on Saturday afternoon if I got a couple guys and you're like, why did they take that guy, you know? Um, so, of course, we'd like to, um, but, you know, like I started off saying, we were going to get the right guys. It was not about quantity. It was about quality, and uh, we were getting the best available, and we were not just going to – take a guy just to take a guy because we had a position of need because you have to live with that guy for four or five years, not just one year. And, you know, that's from experience. I've done that in the past. And, and you look back and go, you know, if I have an opportunity to do that again, I'm not doing it. So, you know, just like you guys as coaches, we, we're learning every day and, and, and trying to make the right decisions that can make Pittsburgh a better place. Uh, did you have any preconceived idea of what this was going to be like given your circumstances and, and how did it measure up? Well, even if I did, it didn't meet those expectations. I guarantee you that. You know, you really didn't know what to, you know, you walked in, you really didn't know. It was day by day what you were doing. And uh, so there was no preconceived, hey, yeah, this is what it's going to be like. You knew it wasn't going to be easy. I can tell you that. You knew there was going to be a lot of, you know, uh, long days and sleepless nights uh, trying to put it together. And, um, you know, uh, shoot one of our, you know, a contact day is from, you know, is one day. Um, so if you get to a high school and see a kid at 6 a.m., you know, you have till 11.59 p.m. Otherwise, you, you know, if you go into 12.01, you've just broken NCAA violation. And, uh, you know, it's amazing where you had, to, you know, coaches pulling out at 11.58 out of a home, you know, trying to build that relationship. And, and that was something that happened. Uh, I won't point out who it was that broke those hour rules, but I'm sure he's back there somewhere. Um, but, you know, that to me is impressive. And, and uh, so you, you, you didn't know what to expect. And like I said, that's why I thank you know, these coaches. They did an unbelievable job because you came in. Uh, not knowing what to expect. And every coach had to really take charge of his position and, and go out there and make something happen on the road. How troubled were you by the uh, decommits that popped up over the last couple of days? You know what? Um, I think I've been coaching, I don't know, look at my resume, 20-some years. Um, you know, uh, and again, we're going to talk about, obviously, the players that, are, that committed to us and our Pittsburgh Panthers. That's most important. But I'll just address it quickly, saying that's the business. It's something you live with. And... Uh, and, you know, we got the guys that want to be here, and that's the most important thing is we're coaching guys that want to be here.